Welcome, my name is Conrad. In this presentation, I will introduce you to the concept of augmented dynamic symbolic execution. Let's start with the high-level motivation of our research. Here we can see a sample method written in C-sharp. The method takes as input an integer denoting age and tells us if the age is a working age. We all know how painful and costly is fixing defects. Our main line of defense against defects is writing tests. Let us look at the example unit tests for this method. As you can see, we test if the method returns expected value for h equal to 15, 30, and 70. Our set of tests, a test suite, executes each statement in the code at least once, thus achieving 100% code coverage. In general, test suites achieving high code coverage are likely to be good at catching real-world defects. I have just made an implicit assumption here. We have written the tests as we have done this manually. However, maybe we could generate the tests automatically with a push of a button. Automatic test generation is a very important challenge in software engineering research because the benefits could be huge. It is estimated testing and debugging constitutes over half of entire development costs and automatic test generation has a potential of reducing these costs by an order of magnitude. Let's get a bit more precise now. What is the state of the art of automatic test generation? One technique, researched for over 30 years, is called Dynamic Symbolic Execution, or DSC for short. Allow me to give you a high-level overview of an entire test workload using a DSC engine. We start with a developer, writing source code, which then gets compiled into bytecode when programming, for example, for Java Virtual Machine or .NET Platform. Now is the first time the Dynamic Symbolic Execution Engine takes over. The engine statically analyzes the bytecode and dynamically executes the application to extract the mathematical constraints that have to be fulfilled by the method inputs to make the method execute given part of its code. On the slide we can see a sample of constraints extracted from the isWorkingAge method. For example, to reach the last statement, return true, the age input has to be greater than 20 and less or equal to 65. Now the constraints are given to a constraint solver, like for example Z3, to obtain concrete values required to fulfill these constraints computed by the constraint solver. On the example here we see three different values for age variable, each fulfilling one of the sample constraints given earlier. The variable values are then used as inputs for the method under test in the automatically generated set of unit tests, forming a test suite presented to the user. This closes the testing workflow loop with automatic test generation using a DSE engine. So, let's repeat. The developer first writes the code, which gets compiled to bytecode. The DSE engine extracts the mathematical constraints. The constraints then get solved and the solutions are used as arguments for the method under test in the resulting automatically generated unit test suite. Ok, that was plain DSC. We used it to automatically generate unit test suite, but unfortunately the test suite misses a bug. Let's say that people of age 20 are also classified as being in working age, contrary to what the code states. Why we have missed this bug? Because it happened at a boundary case, where the bugs tend to happen very often. We could detect it by manually writing tests at boundaries, like for H20 and H65 in this case. But how can we upgrade our DSC workflow to do it automatically for us? One of the approaches already tried out by others is to automatically modify the source code to force the DSC engine to cover the boundary cases. Here you can see an example of such a modification. While this is an artificial example, actual practice is very similar to what you see here. While the modification you just saw looks to be relatively simple, it has many downsides. For one, we have to deal with the syntax of the underlying language when rewriting the source, increasing the complexity of the implementation and making it work only with a given programming language. Other problem is that source code is still long way from the actual constraint solver, 
so many things can go wrong. For example, DSC engine, while analyzing the modified bytecode obtained from the change source, can decide that the artificially inserted branches are redundant and optimize them into oblivion. Okay, this was the source code rewriting approach. Other method I already tried out in academia is to modify the bytecode. Unfortunately, this only partially mitigates the problems direct modification of the source code has. Maybe there is a better way. Well, by looking at this diagram, the solution seems obvious. What we can do is to not work on the level of source code or bytecode, but directly with the mathematical constraints extracted by the DSC engine. Just before the constraints are fed to the constraint solver to be solved, they undergo augmentation. In our example, the augmentation that gives us input at the boundary 20 is highlighted on the slide with orange color. This simple idea is what we call the Augmented Dynamic Symbolic Execution, or ADSC for short. What are the advantages of using ADSC? Because our approach is much closer to the metal, that is, to the constraint solver, it doesn't suffer any of the problems manipulation of source or bytecode does. We don't have to deal with the language syntax and possibly the underlying toolchain infrastructure, drastically decreasing the complexity of implementation and allowing for easier modification of the constraints. ADSC is general, working with any programming language. Lastly, we are guaranteed that our augmentations will reach the solver without any further modifications by the DSC engine. While I just introduced you to the ADSC concept talking about boundary cases, ADSC is actually much more general. We can instantiate it to fulfill many different criteria. We can augment DSC to cover boundary values as already discussed. We can aim to achieve logical coverage, like modified condition decision coverage used to test critical systems. We can use ADSC for mutation testing, or we can force the code to throw exceptions. Note that forcing exceptions is already implemented in the DSC engine we are using, Microsoft Specs, but using different mechanism. These are some examples of the ADSC instantiations, but many other can be thought of. For each of these augmentation instances, I will now present you with a non-trivial example so you get a better grasp of the ADSC concept. I have already shown you an example of boundary values instance, but it was only partial. Let's explore it further to get the whole picture. Have a look at the set of constraint systems obtained from this method, also called path conditions, because these constraint conjunctions form a condition that needs to be fulfilled by the program inputs to follow given program path. Note we have seen these particular path conditions already, only in a little bit different form. But let's have a look now at all of the augmented path conditions. Here is a path condition testing on the lower bound of the age variable type domain, integer. Actually, these are two augmented path conditions, but I used a set notation here to encode both of them in one line. As seen from the set, we also test for the value of age being 1, as we want to test not only on the boundaries, but also around them, inside the domain. Similarly, we test not only at 20, but also at 19, inside the domain. For the second inequality, age more than 65, we again test at the boundaries and just beside them. We augment the last path condition to test for the remaining values at the boundaries and inside their domains. That's it for the boundary values augmentation instance. Notice that we started with 3 path conditions and ended up with 12 additional, a 5 fold increase in total number. Let's now proceed to error conditions augmentation. On the slide you can see three methods that at the first glance don't have an interesting control flow, but can actually throw various random exceptions. PEX, the DSC engine we use, adds an implicit branch to the source, forcing the random exceptions. We can achieve the same effect by applying appropriate augmentation to the constraints. For reference types, we might require for them to be null, causing null reference exception to be drawn. For array types and index dereferencing, we can require for the array to have not enough elements, causing index out of range exception. And for our last example, we can make the program throw arithmetic overflow exception by feeding such constraint to the constraint solver. 
Another ADSC instance we define in the paper is Modified Condition Decision Coverage, or MCDC coverage. It is a type of logical coverage. MCDC coverage criterion very thoroughly exercises logical conditions, as they tend to hide a lot of complexity, thus being a breeding ground for bugs. One important feature of the MCDC coverage is that it ensures each predicate of the complex condition will be shown to independently affect the entire expression result. We will see example of this in a moment. MCDC coverage is used to test safety critical systems, for example software controlling airplane landing procedure. In our artificial example, path conditions obtained from plane DLC would look as follows. The first one satisfies the branch returning true, and the second one satisfies the branch returning false. Note that path condition setting manual override to true would also satisfy the branch returning true. Now, how path conditions augmented with MCDC coverage would look like? In bold orange are marked additions as compared to the plain path conditions. To the right we have a hint on the evaluation result of each path condition. Why some additions? We want to meet the MCDC coverage criterion of testing that each variable independently affects the result of the entire expression. If we look at the two topmost augmented path conditions, we will see that the is over water variable indeed does that, as remaining variable values are the same. Similarly, the first and the third from top path conditions independently exercise the is landing variable, and the two path conditions at the bottom do this for the manual override variable. The last ADAC instance I want to discuss is mutation testing. It is especially important in this talk because we have used it to evaluate the ADAC effectiveness. Namely, we evaluated how ADAC increases mutation score for two of its instances, boundary values and mutation testing. This needs explanation, so let me introduce you to the concept of mutation score. One way to evaluate the quality of a test suite is to measure how many artificially seeded defects it detects. Those defects are called mutants. Let's go now through example of such a mutant. On the screen we see a condition in the source code with a constraint extracted from it, pretty obvious. Now we introduce a mutant, that is, a defect artificially seeded in the source code. As we can see, the binary operator was mutated from lesser to unequal. Of course, there are many more mutations possible. We could replace the operator with different one, or replace or modify the operands. We could add 1 to the h, or replace 20 with minus 1, for example. We even could negate entire expression, or substitute it with constant logical value, like true. The mutant is supposed to simulate a defect in the source code, a mistake made by a programmer. Thus, a test suite should be able to detect this defect, to kill the mutant, by having a test that will expose it. If we wanted to construct a test that kills this particular mutant, on what input it should operate? What if the h is equal to 10? Both the original expression and mutant evaluate true, so the mutant remains undetected, because the test will pass whether the program contains the defect or not. What if the h is equal to 20? Both of the expressions evaluate to false, so again the mutant is undetected, because this time the test always fails. And what if the h is equal to 30? Such test would fail on the original expression, on the correct program, but it would pass on the mutant. So it would behave differently for the correct and incorrect version of the program, thus detecting the mutant. Notice I just said the test fails on the correct program, but this can be easily fixed by just negating its expected result. If we now generalize, we see that to kill an arbitrary mutant, we need an expression that applies exclusive OR on the original constraint and the mutated constraint. A test exercising the code with inputs fulfilling such sort expression is guaranteed to behave differently on the mutant, thus killing it. Let's discuss now how we evaluated our approach. First, what tools we have used. We implemented our approach on Microsoft's .NET platform, using PEX as our DSC engine and Z3 as our constraint solver. Our evaluation subjects. Our evaluation set consists of methods whose names are visible on this slide. First line is self-explanatory. Wheelbreak system method contains a set of deeply nested conditional instructions. Find middle finds the middle element. Wraparound counter counts to given number and then continues counting from zero. 
Finally, ROOP integer examples is a set of atomic methods in the sense each of them is made mostly from one control flow instruction. Let me repeat, we evaluated how ADAC increases mutation score for two of its instances, boundary values and mutation testing. We did this on the evaluation set of methods mentioned moments ago. Mutation score is the percentage of mutants killed. We generated thousands of mutants of the source code and tried to kill them with thousands of mutant killers, in the case of mutation score instance. From this diagram, we can read that plain DSC as implemented in PEX kills, on average over all the methods, almost 6 out of 10 mutants. The instance of ADSC that augments the test suite with tests exercising the code on boundary values kills almost 7 out of 10 mutants. And if we augment the constraints so that they become mutant killers as explained on previous slides, the resulting augmented test suite kills over 7.5 out of every 10 mutants. Unfortunately, the increased mutation score comes at a cost. Namely, augmentation produces many path conditions that have to be solved by the constraint solver. Most of them turn out to be either unsatisfiable or redundant, so they don't end up in the resulting test suite, but nevertheless have to be processed, which takes time. In our evaluation set, PEX on average generated 7 tests for each method. PEX had to solve much more path conditions than 7 to get these tests, but we augment only the path conditions that PEX used to generate tests. That's why the number of path conditions and tests for plain DSC on the chart is equal. As you can see, for the boundary value augmentation the number is considerably higher and for mutation testing the value is preposterous. Why? And more importantly, can we fix this? In a nutshell, the problem is that only one operator present in the source code gets augmented many times, especially if it is in a loop, resulting in many redundant augmentations. Fortunately, we can reason about this even before conducting the augmentation and avoid the redundancy basically completely solving the problem. We haven't made the optimization because we ran into limitation of PEX extensibility architecture, but if we could integrate ADAC directly into the engine, the problem would be solved. On this chart you can see actual average execution times which directly reflect the amount of augmented path conditions that had to be processed. Let's summarize the preliminary results about ADAC we have. We have shown that ADAC can increase mutation score, which means it can increase the fault detection ability. And also, we managed to generate tests covering boundary cases, which meet developers' expectations. To wrap up the presentation, the overarching goal is automatic test generation. We work towards this goal by augmenting dynamic symbolic execution, that is, by modifying constraints just before they are fed to the constraint solver. We implement two instantiations of the ADSC, boundary values and mutation testing. We show both of these instances increase mutation score, Thus, our preliminary research shows a promise in the ADAC concept. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for your attention.